and welcome to six simple tips for using your Microsoft Surface Book. In this video, we're going to go over some basic usage tips for the Microsoft Surface Book. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, everybody, tip one. Now, you might be familiar with the Surface Keyboard, and if you are, there's a few tips and tricks and hidden shortcut keys that you might be interested in. So, the first one is, uh, along the top, you have Function Keys, and this is super basic, don't worry. Uh, if you click the Function, that will actually lock in, uh, you can see that it lights up there on the Function Key. That actually allows you to automatically use the F11, F9, F8, whatever keys, if that light is lit up. Some people really like hitting their F5 buttons to refresh web pages, and they're really used to function keys. Um, if you just want to you know, use these top row keys for moving the volume up and down, make sure that little light is off, and then you'll have the brightness for the keyboard right there. You'll have the uh, volume up and down. <coughs> And um, let's get to the hidden keys that you may not know about. So uh, if you look right here, you have delete and backspace. If you hold down function and hit delete, that brings brightness up and backspace will bring the brightness down. So there's those. And also you notice you have page up, page down, and home along the top row. The thing you may not know is the arrow keys also work for that if you are holding down the function key. So as you can see, if I press down, this web page will scroll slightly. Uh, but if I'm holding down function, it will treat it as a page down. See that? Page down. And if you hit left, it will go home. So that brings you to the home. And if you hit the right, it will move you to the end. So if you're scrolling on with the keyboard, it's uh, kind of nice to have these page up, page down. And uh, there you go. Secret keyboard commands on the Surface Book. Okay, tip two, let's say you have a game or some sort of application and you want to be able to control which GPU that it's using. For example, a lot of times when you boot up Minecraft, for whatever reason, it will automatically load it into the Intel HD graphics rather than the Nvidia graphics. So if you want to alleviate this, it's really simply just right click on the executable that you want to run and there's an option here that says run with graphics processor and you can choose the high performance NVIDIA processor and you go ahead and click that and your application will open using the correct GPU okay guys tip three if you're interested in adjusting or calibrating your pen you can go ahead to the Microsoft Store and search for surface and you can open up the Surface app. And within this application, it will let you change some of the settings. So you can change your pen sensitivity curve right here. And it lets you test and see how sensitive it is on the other side. So, and if you want to go back to stock, go ahead and hit reset and you're back to the normal sensitivity curve. There you go. Okay guys, tip number four, using the Surface Pen. Now, a simple click will take you right into OneNote where you can start taking notes about whatever you want. So let's say you're reading uh, something online and you're interested in bringing that information into your uh, OneNote file. All you do is double click the top here and that will take a screenshot and you can go ahead and pull that in to your OneNote. And the very last thing you can do with the pen, uh, besides writing and erasing and the things we've talked so far, is you can actually talk to Cortana. So if you hold the button down, you could do something like this. Tell me a joke. And there you go, there's lots of different commands that you can use with Cortana, uh, but you, it's really nice to just hold that down and be able to figure something else. How far away is the sun from the earth? 
7,760,212 miles. Pretty sweet that you can do that right from the pen. You could be across the room and they'd probably pick it up pretty well if, as long as like, you talked loud enough for, for Cortana to hear you. So there you go, tip four. Okay, for tip five, we're gonna talk a little bit about detaching uh, the Surface Book into its tablet mode. So we're gonna go ahead and push the disattach button. I find it's easiest if you hold the button down and then hold the base right there and pull up. That keeps everything stiff so you can pull it out without any issues. Um, so now when you're using it in slate mode like this or clipboard mode as, as Microsoft likes to call it, if you start to get low on battery, you actually can just take the charger and flip it up into there and now you're charging uh, in slate mode and you can continue to use this indefinitely. Okay, for the last tip we're going to uh, show you how to enable smooth scrolling in Chrome. A lot of us use Chrome, some say it's a power hog, but then the next day I hear that all the other browsers are power hogs too, so it kind of just goes around who is the power hog. So um, I tend to just kind of ignore that. I usually have access to an outlet. And anyway, <laughs> getting on a side here, but let's go ahead and show you how to enable smooth scrolling. And to show you that, so if you're just swiping, yeah, it scrolls with your finger, um, but it doesn't have any of that inertia that you see a lot of times, uh, particularly on Apple products. So to <clears throat> turn that experimental feature on in Chrome, you're going to type Chrome colon slash slash flags. And you're going to scroll down to this setting here, which says smooth scrolling. And you're going to click enable. And you have to relaunch in order to do that. But we'll relaunch it and go back into here. And you can see that you now have some inertial scrolling on here. So if you like that feel better go ahead and enable that and there you go thanks for watching six simple tips for using your microsoft surface book if you're interested in more tips and tricks go ahead and click here into this video in this video we will be covering uh, a few things all the way from undervolting to how to compress your os files to save some disk space on your machine so uh, go ahead and check that out uh, check out my channel, see about his channel. If you're interested, click subscribe right here. And check us out for more cool videos. We'll see you soon.